فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who struggled and strove from the very beginning through the generations to learn the goodness, to put it into practice and to convey it to others in a way that today we are seated here in order to listen to this goodness. Amen. My beloved brothers and sisters, I am overjoyed to be with you once again in such a beautiful environment. And Allah has bestowed upon us the most beautiful of weather. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed given us this opportunity and He will ask us about how we have used these opportunities. Before I actually go ahead with my points to ponder, inshallah, I would like to make mention of what happened the last time in Ghana. Not because I was upset. I was never upset. That is a misnotion. I was so delighted that I came back quicker than I've been back to other countries. I was so delighted because I had so many brothers and sisters who were so warm and welcoming. And indeed, the fear at the same time was that I have a responsibility unto my maker. Just like you have a responsibility unto your maker. It is the message that will last up to the end and up to Qiyamah. Whether I carry it or someone else carries it, Wallahi, that is the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we always glorify the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not necessarily the person who has brought it, because unless it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed he is the greatest of creation and the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for us, we are mere mortals. We are human beings. We are equals. In fact, we may not know, I may even be worse than all of you put together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. So therefore, yes, it was my responsibility to make mention of this when I saw so much of excitement that I felt perhaps, perhaps it is a test for me. And therefore, if you notice, I cut my talk and I made mention of this fear of mine. And I promised myself and I asked Allah, Oh Allah, bring me back to these lovely people so that I can complete what I wanted to tell them by the will of Allah. He has brought me back. So this is something that I felt I needed to clarify because some brothers, some sisters thought perhaps I was upset. Nay, I was not upset. Not at all. In fact, I'm super delighted again to be with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, don't we want to be the best, the best of our communities, the best of the Muslimin, the best of the people? Wouldn't we like to be the best? Imagine if the Prophet ﷺ were to tell us that such and such a person is the best of the people and we happen to fit into that description, would it not be an honor? Subhanallah. So I'd like to spend the next 45 minutes talking about who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described would be the best. So many times in the hadith, he says, khayrukum, or he says, khayrun nasi. He says, the best from amongst you. And then he gives a description. And then sometimes he says, the best of the people. And then he gives a description. Did you know that a lot of this is connected to your relationship with the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the best of you, a lot of the times it is connected somehow to how you have benefited the other people who also exist on the earth. Because my brothers and sisters, do not forget that he who made you has not only made you, but he has an entire creation that he has made together with you. 
for a purpose and for a reason. You need to understand that reason. When Allah made me, He did not make me alone. I should not be selfish. I'm not the only one on earth. I'm not the only person in Ghana, for example. There are people, many more people, perhaps better people than myself who exist. I need to treat them fairly because they belong to the same maker. Remember, Muslim or not Muslim, they are creatures of the same Allah. Remember, human beings or animals, they are the creatures of the same Allah. Remember, animals or the environment, including the plants and the trees and so on, the rivers, the water, all that is created by the same Allah. You have duties to fulfill unto all this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who fulfills that duty in the best possible way shall indeed be the best person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. But today I wish to go into a few more details. The first hadith that I'm going to speak about is where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. He tells us, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best from amongst you is he or she who learns the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and teaches it to others. This includes all aspects of learning. Why? Because it is the word of Allah. Allah made you, together with you, He sent a manual. He sent a book. That book will guide you as to what Allah wants from you and how you need to live and where you will go if you live your life as per the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you don't read that book, you won't know. Subhanallah. This morning we had a beautiful program on the television and my colleague had actually made mention of a powerful point regarding the Quran. You know, when a person has a sickness or an illness or a cough, etc., what happens? He will go to the specialist and the doctor will write a prescription. He will then take that prescription to the pharmacy. From there, he will collect the medication and you find that he will put that medication in his pocket, an antibiotic, for example, put it in his pocket. And he did not take it. He did not administer it. If that's the case, what happens? Subhanallah, simple, he won't get better. But where is the medication? With him, on his person, in his pocket. Did it help him? No, zero. Who was foolish? He was very foolish. The solution to your problem is in your pocket. But you did not take it out and use it the way you were supposed to do it. The same applies to all of us. We are living on earth, it's a challenge. The solution to all our problems and the path of entry into paradise is actually Subhanallah, the Quran. The Quran, the word of the same Allah who owns us, He created us, He is the owner of paradise. We are going to return to Him. He's given us the solution. Many of us, that solution is packed away on a shelf at home. We barely read it. And if we read it, it is just a ceremony. But Allah says, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ In Surah Saad, Allah says, the book that we have revealed, a blessed book that we have revealed, referring to the Qur'an, what was the purpose of its revelation? Allah says, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ For them to ponder over its verses deeply, to reflect over the verses of the Qur'an in a deep way. That is why Allah revealed the Qur'an. He did not reveal it so that you can pack it away on a shelf and perhaps pick it up every time something happens and you read a few verses without any form of understanding, put it away and you have not felt in your heart that you need to do something to understand the word of Allah. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying that the recitation without understanding is not important, it is very important. Reciting the Quran, even if you have not understood it, is absolutely important. It is tilawa, it is the word of Allah. But equally important is to want to understand that word and to make an effort to go out and to listen. Today, 
We become lazy. We don't want to read. We are no longer, may Allah forgive us. We are no longer a nation that loves to read as those before us. So what has happened? Allah says, okay, I make it easy for you. Now you can listen to it. In what way? Well, you can turn on the television or you can listen to an audio. You can listen to the radio or you can Google it on your phone. As simple as that. You have it on your phone, but still with that phone, we don't make an effort, do we? We will listen to everything that would lead us away from Jannah. But when it comes to leading us towards paradise, do we actually use our phone every day in a way that it would draw us closer to paradise? If the answer is no, brothers and sisters, do something about it. Do something about it. Let's improve, myself included. We need to improve. We need to make sure we use technology in order to develop a link with our maker that is far stronger than it was. So the Quran is in our phones. I want to ask you a question and I want you to raise your hands displaying the answer. The question is, how many of you in your phones, you have an application where the Quran is in it? Put up your hand. You have an app on your phone that has the Mus'haf or the Quran in it. Put up your hands. Almost everyone. Can you see that? MashaAllah. Now, I don't want to ask you how many use it every day, just like you use WhatsApp. No, I don't want to say that. But what I want to tell you is ask yourself, what is more important to you? Facebook or that other app? Snapchat or that other app? Instagram or that other app? Twitter or that other app? WhatsApp or that app? Which app? You need to ask yourself, subhanallah. I say it again, WhatsApp or that app? Which app? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to answer it. I think... It's okay to use WhatsApp, obviously, in order to communicate with the right people at the right time for the right reasons. Yes, it's okay. No harm, no problem. But at least spend some time during your day becoming khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allamahu and it is on your phone. Subhanallah. The best from amongst you are those who will learn the Qur'an and put it into practice, convey it to others. And it's on your phone, as simple as that. Pick it up, read one verse, listen to its recitation, read the meaning of it, and you have understood it. Talk about it that day to your family and to others. The problem with us, when we get onto the table to eat, if we are fortunate to have the meal together as a family, and I very strongly promote that we must have at least one meal as a family every single day, by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and check it out. No matter how old you are, no matter where you work, no matter how important you are. Back at home, you are just a member of the family. You need to make time for your family, for your children, for your spouse, for your parents. You need to make time. I promise you, those who have the meal together and pray together, they shall remain together by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of us have lost the importance of this. So my brothers and sisters, if we are fortunate to have that meal together, talk about the verse that you read on that day to your children, to your family members. Let them all talk about verses that they read on that particular day. It will make a very, very interesting meeting. And subhanallah, if you were to die on that day, imagine the angels have already written that this person spent part of his day reading the word of Allah. He spoke to his children about one verse. Do you think it's going to be a bad day, the last day of yours? Cannot be a bad day because you are used to doing something regularly. The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they are a little, even if it's a small amount. So subhanallah, there are so many aspects that I can speak about when it comes to the Quran and learning it and teaching it to others. But I have said very little and I will... Stop at that, inshallah. I will continue to the next point. The point being raised, you will become the best if you learn what Allah wants from you and you tell others what Allah wants from us. That is when you become the best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His word is so beautiful. It has in it a proper balance in the way that if you were to learn it, it would show in your character. If you are to learn the Qur'an, you become soft. You don't become hard. 
It is shown in the way you talk to people that this person is definitely min ahlil Quran. He's a person who has the Quran in his heart. The Prophet ﷺ was the greatest. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about his character, she simply said, Kana al Quran. His character was the Quran embodied in one man, subhanallah. Whatever the Quran has taught, he had it in him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are lenient. Sometimes people think when you are religious, you are harsh. In fact, it is the opposite. When you are religious and pious, you become tolerant of people. You become respectful of others. You actually want for them the goodness. And you reach out to them in the most beautiful manner. Why? Because you have recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you've recognized that the others are also the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We move on to the second hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also a narration of Sahih al-Bukhari. He says, خِيَارُكُمْ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا The best from amongst you are those who have best character. I just spoke moments ago about the character being the Qur'an. Here it is mentioned by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you noticed? He didn't say that the best amongst you, those who read one whole Qur'an every day, and those who stand in voluntary prayer all night, and those who perhaps fast every other day, he did not say those are the best. Some of these deeds, yes, they are good within certain limits if they are done with the right intentions and within the correct limitations, yes. But remember, those deeds can be taken away from you if your character is bad. You backbite about this one, you've cheated this one, you spoke harshly to that one, you hurt the heart of the other one, and you did not even think about what you were saying in terms of slander about the fourth one. What will happen? Your good deeds go on the day of judgment to those people whom you have wronged until they have dispersed. When there's no more good deeds, the bad deeds of the people you have wronged will then come onto your shoulders. Would we like that? No, we would not. Therefore, be careful. When you do good deeds, it will show in your character because your character will be so beautiful, you are scared to lose those good deeds to the people you may have wronged with your bad character. So I call on myself to begin with, and then every one of us, let's improve our character and conduct, the way we speak to people, the way we talk, the way we interact, what we say about others. I promise you, more than half, if not 90% of our problems would be resolved if we only spoke good about others behind their backs. Imagine, subhanallah, your mother-in-law, mashallah, the only thing you said about her Good things behind her back. MashaAllah, your daughter-in-law, subhanAllah. The only thing you said about her was that which was good behind her back. The problem with us, behind the back, we say the worst things. In front, <laughs> we have the broadest smile. What is that smile? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We need to change that. Be genuine. Be a legitimate person who has a good feeling. SubhanAllah. I know I've given the example of in-laws, but it always goes back to the term law. We don't know why it's there. To this day, no one has explained to me why the term law is used when it comes to marriage. But perhaps I heard it once. Someone says, you know, when you're a father, you become a father-in-law. Subhanallah. When you're a son, you become a son-in-law. When you're a daughter, you become a daughter-in-law. When you're a mother, you become a mother-in-law. When you're a wife, what do you become? You are the law, right? So this is something that I'm sure you may have heard me say in the past, right? Subhanallah. That means you guys are quite uh, well clued up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But that's the only explanation I've heard. Obviously, it was just on a lighter note. Don't take it serious because the law belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The point being raised, speak good about others behind their backs. Be kind to people. Reach out to them in goodness. Don't make life difficult for someone. Ask yourself. If you want to be the best of people in your own family and in your community and in your nation, Wallahi, ask yourself. Am I the source of difficulty for others? Have I made anyone else's life difficult? Starting with those I live with. What am I doing to make life easy for others? If you can answer the questions correctly, you are successful. 
If you answer them wrongly or if you have a wrong answer and that is the answer, in that case, you need to improve. What am I doing to make life easy for those whom I interact with, for my family members, for my children, those who want to get married? What am I doing to facilitate for them? Many people have told me, I cannot wait for my father to die. And I'm shocked. I say, why? Nine times out of ten, you know what? He's just disagreeing with whom I want to marry. And I think to myself, I wish there was better communication. And I wish the fathers were not stubborn. Because my beloved fathers and mothers, we all have dreams for our children. Remember, those dreams need to be adjusted within limits from time to time, based on reality on the ground. You cannot have an idealistic approach in a real world where it's inapplicable at times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I hope you've understood this beautiful encouragement. If your character is bad in your own home, you will have children cursing you and you will be cursing one another. That brings me to a point, my beloved parents, never ever curse your children no matter what. I know people who curse their children because they are dark in complexion. I know people who curse their children because they did not achieve results at school. And I know that some of the richest from amongst you have hardly done well at school. Is that not correct? Correct. I heard quite a few yeses here. I can actually give you examples by name. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. It goes to show, one day a young man asked me, he said, how come that rich man only has grade 7? And I said, it is for Allah to show us that wealth has nothing to do with your brain. Rather, it has to do with Allah's gift, whether you have that or not. Some have, yes, they have excelled and still achieved, still become wealthy. But some, without excelling at school, they became rich. I know a man who qualified as a doctor. He gave up medicine because he became a businessman when he saw that one or two wheelings and dealings made them richer than him. He thought to himself, well, I worked and I had a chat with him. I said, my brother, you have a blessing of Allah. You are helping people as well. Keep on helping the people with this beautiful field that you have taken so much of time to study. You know what he told me? He was very intelligent. He says, well, Allah's given me money. I will pay them to go to the hospital to visit another doctor. Imagine when a man wants to run behind it, he will run behind it and he will give you any excuse. Let's get back to what we were saying. Speaking about the best from amongst us, we spoke about character and conduct. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, and this is another narration in Sahih al-Bukhari, خَيْرُكُمْ أَحْسَنُكُمْ قَضَاءً Do you know what that means? The best from amongst you are those who are best in returning wealth or money. After you have borrowed, you return it timeously. You are the best. Subhanallah. I have borrowed some money from someone. And I gave them back. But I made them sing for that money. I made them sweat for it. I made them run after me for months on end. Can I be considered the best? No. You borrowed money. The man gave you a month to pay. You pay it. And subhanallah, there is another part of the explanation. And that is, if without any conditions at all, you know, if I make a previous condition, it becomes known as riba. Riba means interest. I say, I give you a thousand, give me one thousand one hundred after one month. That one hundred is known as riba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has made dealing permissible, but Allah has prohibited usury and interest. So interest is not allowed. But without any conditions, if a man gives you one thousand and you have then given him back the thousand and together with that you've given him something without any conditions just because of your delight your happiness whatever else that is also part and parcel of this narration it is permissible and it is meritorious it is something that you will be rewarded for but he did not expect it and it was not part of the norm in the community these are some conditions we need to know but the moral of it, the most important part of it is please return what you've taken from others to them in a good way, timely. You need to make sure that you have given what is theirs back to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among the best. Then we have a beautiful hadith in Sahih al-Tirmidhi, Sunan al-Tirmidhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ يُرْجَى خَيْرُهُ وَيُؤْمَنُ شَرُّهُ The best from amongst you are those whom 
Their goodness is expected and we are all protected from their evil. From their evil. Do you know what this means? You see a person and you know in your heart that you know what? We expect only good from this man. We don't expect to be harmed from this person. If you have that strong feeling within you, then that person is indeed a good person. You follow me? So the question I want to ask myself and yourselves, when people see you, no matter who they are, no matter who they are, do they look at you and think to themselves, I expect only goodness from this sister or this brother. Is that what they think? If that is what they think, mashallah, you have achieved a lot. You are becoming one of the best. If the people can say, this person will never harm me. If that's the case, you are one of the best because today, my brothers and sisters, we will all agree that your best friend is no longer the one who helps you, but is the one who does not harm you. Do you not agree? There was a time when people used to say, you know, my best friend helps me here and does this for me, that for me. I think good, a good person, let's say a good person, a good person is he or she who does not harm others. If you cannot benefit them, at least don't harm them. Like I always say, the ulama who struggle and who strive to help the ummah and they perhaps benefit us in so many different ways, one small thing and we start speaking bad about them, bad mouthing them in such a bad way that sometimes the matter is not even true and they have only helped us. What did they do to harm you? What did the man do to harm you? You are talking bad about him today. Say something good. He did not harm you. Same applies when we meet people and they are glad to meet us. They know that only goodness will come from this person and we, are, we will be saved from any harm. They will never harm us. In that particular case, we have become from the best. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, and this is a very powerful narration. I'm sure we all know it off by heart. Khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi. Two words repeated. And the last word is connected to your spouse. The best from amongst you is the best from amongst you to his spouse. Subhanallah. You know the term ahl here? It refers, yes, to your wife. But by extension, it refers to your family. How many of us are best to our family? My beloved brothers, I want to take a moment to address you. And I know the sisters also would benefit from it. But my beloved brothers, how many of us are guilty of being nice to the women of the world to show them what we have, to reach out to them without reaching out to the women whom Allah has blessed us with in our own home. So we turn around and we don't even appreciate our wives. We look at them, we look at our children, our wives, our family members, we don't commend them or pass a good comment or at least say, you know what? I think you look gorgeous. I think you're good. Mashallah. You're dressed so well. Mashallah. You're smelling good. What's this? Subhanallah. Or oh, smile at them. But for the others, what do we do? Subhanallah. You go to work. First thing, ooh, you look lovely. Who's that? Someone who doesn't perhaps even look that lovely. But it gave you a kick because shaitan was there spoiling you from being khayrukum. If you did it at home, you became khayrukum. And if you did it where you were not supposed to do it, you might just become sharrukum. You might become the worst. So go out of your way to appreciate the people you live with, your family members. They need reassurance. I remember once there was a brother who told me, you know, I cannot commend my wife on her smell because every time I go home, she is smelling of onions and food and that which is cooked and oil and so on. So how do you want me to tell her you are smelling good? <laughs> do you know what happened? I told him, brother, in that case, you tell her, I'm sure you have cooked such a delicious meal because you are a brilliant cook. Subhanallah, you need to appreciate why she may be smelling of food. She's been in the kitchen preparing food for who? For the neighbor? No, for you. Subhanallah. So if you really want to admire that, get a cook or get food from outside and tell her, listen, my love, here I've got you the best perfume from wherever. 
and you may apply this. We are not going to be cooking from this day on in this kitchen. Seal it. We are buying food from outside. We are getting a cook and he will come or she will come and cook so that I can actually praise you every day regarding the smell. Subhanallah. We need to understand the balance. Obviously, my beloved sisters, you cannot use my statement in order to oppress your, your men. Subhanallah. I need to balance this because... We have to be kind to one another. It's a balance. So what I am saying is, yes, we acknowledge one another. And we must know that the roles being fulfilled are extremely important. Sometimes, and I always like to preach this, you know, my, my family tells me, subhanallah, that yes, you have said it, we want to see you do it. You know what I say? Once in a while, you need to cook too. In Ghana, the men will say, what? Are you crazy? Me? Cooking? Wallahi, my brother, even if the only thing you know how to make is eggs, make it. Subhanallah. Once in a while, cook, I promise you. Show an interest in it, no matter who you are. I've tried to do it myself, and guess what? My eggs are not that bad. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, it's important. We're talking about the best of you, being the best character, being the best to your spouse. Think of what to do to make your family happy. Think of it. And that is when you will be successful. When the family is happy, community will be happy. Why should we fall in the trap of the devil, making us praise the people who, subhanallah, are not deserving of our own praise, more than our spouse. You might want to commend someone else after you have commended those who you meant to begin with. Subhanallah. What's happening in society? I commend someone else's wife and someone is commending my wife. So nothing's going right. Then I want to blame people for having an affair. Well, she's not getting any attention from anyone besides a stranger. But my brothers and sisters, be careful, be careful, be careful of technology. Use it correctly. Use it to educate yourselves. Don't use it to break your homes. Don't use it in a way that you know you have fallen prey to the devil and his plan. For then we cannot be calling ourselves the best. Your relationships online are very, very serious. Remember, a lot of those who might pretend to be a female may actually be a male. A lot of those who pretend to be someone, they are just people to trap you. I recall one day a certain brother told me how much money he has donated to me online. And I told him, I didn't collect any money online. He says, but I've been chatting with you on Facebook. I says, I don't chat on Facebook. But who is it? I said, hang on. You need to know who you are dealing with. If you search my name, there might be 100 profiles with the same name. But if you see the one that is verified, it has a blue tick next to it. Yes, you know you are talking to me. And in that case, perhaps you won't even find a response because of the time I will be speaking to the people of Ghana rather than spending my time, you know, chatting to say hello and how are you to so many people on the globe personally, one-on-one, -on -one, it is impossible. So you need to be intelligent. People have lost their money online. People have lost their marriages online. People have lost their lives online. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Strengthen yourselves. Develop your character, your conduct. And like I said, you'd rather spend that time at home. One more thing I want to mention regarding this point before we move to the next. Brothers and sisters, when you are at home and you have a meal, you are having a meal, put your phone away. Put your phone away. I challenge you. I challenge all of you. And the challenge is for myself too. When you are at home having a meal with your family, Put the phone away if it means for 10, 15, 20 minutes. How many of us, we're on the table, next to us is the phone. Fair enough if it is turned off or silent. But every little while we are speaking on the phone. It is an anticlimax. Trust me, your children, they are maltreated. You are usurping from their time and their right. It is the right of the children that you spend time with them. You teach them table manners. How is that going to happen when you yourself have spoken on the phone throughout the meal, every meal, if at all you've had the meal with them? A lot of us are delayed. We are busy on our phones. They are waiting for us for the meal. Please come to eat. Whether it's dad or mama, whoever. We don't go. 
they call us again. Then they all are sitting and eating, and we are still not gone. And then they finish eating, and after that, we decide, hey, what happened? Food, you guys didn't wait for me. Hang on, we called you 30 times. And 30 times, you just said yes, yes, yes. We don't know whether you were saying yes to what. One of the times we told you, you are stupid, you said yes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. See, we don't even know what's being said sometimes. So my brothers and sisters, let's remember the best from amongst you, those who are best to their family members. One might think, is there a contradiction between all of these? The answer is no. When you've learned the Quran, you have the best character, you will have the best character, you will be the best to your family members, etc. Let's move to another one. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامَ وَرَدَّ السَّلَامَ The best from amongst you, and all this is part of good character, those who feed food, and those who respond to the salam. Someone says, As-salamu alaykum, and you just look away. Go on. وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا when you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a better greeting, or at least reply it equally. Someone says, Assalamu alaikum, you should be saying, Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah, many of us, people greet us, Assalamu alaikum, and you look at them like, What do you want? What do you want? No, just greet back. You get 30 rewards when you greet back the full greeting. Subhanallah. It's amazing. And people take this for granted. It is such a powerful gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hadith says, Should I not show you that which if you were to fulfill it, it will increase the love among you? Simple, spread the salam among you and between you. I greet you, assalamu alaikum. It means peace be upon you. It also means I will not harm you. If you don't harm someone, you will increase the love. It all goes back to the same thing. Are you seeing? Subhanallah. So when we greet people, let us be genuine. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ says, Feed the people. Feed the poor. Take out from what you have been given, the voluntary, and give in the cause of Allah. Feed people. Reach out to the poor. Reach out to your neighbors. Reach out to those who don't have what you have. And you will find that you become the best person. Look at the Ansar. Those of Medina Munawwara. Allah loved them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them in the Quran. One of the qualities he says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَهُ كَانَ بِهِمْ they used to give preference to others over themselves, even if they needed desperately that which they were giving away. That was a quality that Allah loved. How many of us, we love something, we want it, we need it, and then we give it away. How many do that? Very few of us. Very few of us. Well, I tell you, if you can do that, then you have arrived at another level. You have arrived at a beautiful level of faith and conviction and purity and goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. So remember to share. And then I spoke about responding the salam, raddu salam. When you are greeted, reply. But I want to tell you khayrukum aw man yabda'u bis salam. The best from amongst the people is he who starts with the salam. You know there are two people, you're walking, and you're telling yourself, well, I'll greet back if he greets. And you know what? I'll greet back if she greets. Well, the winner is he who greets first. So you are in a competition. You need to make sure you greet first. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. I said it before you. Such that sometimes maybe the two of you might say assalamu alaikum together. And as a result, you might both say wa alaikum as salam also together. Well, that shows that you would draw. You know, sometimes in the competition, there are two people who ran 100 meters in eight seconds. Well, I don't know of eight seconds because even Hussein Bolt did not do that. <laughs> but say, for example, one did it in eight seconds and the other one exactly the same. Both of them will have the medal. Subhanallah. The same applies. This salam and raddus salam is far more important than the Olympic gold medal. Trust me. 
Allah is not going to ask you, you ran 100 meters, how quickly did you run? No, no. That's for your own joy and happiness, maybe in the dunya. But Allah will ask you, you, you greeted first, well, you deserve a greater reward. This one greeted you, you did not reply. Why? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Then we have a beautiful hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, خِيَارُكُمْ أَلْيَنُكُمْ مَنَاكِبَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ the best from amongst you are those who have the softest shoulders in salah. What does that mean? It needs an explanation, right? Okay, let me explain to you. When we stand in the masjid, especially the men, when we stand in the masjid, you know what happens? We come early, we find a nice place, and we are sitting near the front, and we have our space designed out for us, and there is a lot of place, mashallah. Suddenly, the masjid starts becoming full, and then... People start coming and they want to sit next to you. This happens in the Haram in Mecca. It happens in the Haram in Medina. It happens in the Masajid on the Jumu'ah. It happens in so many different houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where we come early, we feel entitled to the place that we are sitting in. And we feel so bad when someone comes late and they want to push in between ourselves and the one who was seated next to us. Not realizing that the hadith says, the best from amongst you are those who have soft shoulders. They make space for the others who come late in salah. Make space for them. You make space because, subhanallah, I tell you something interesting. You know the first saf in the front is such that the reward of being in that saf for the men is so, so great. The hadith says, وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ يَعْلَمُ النَّاسُ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَالصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ لَسْتَهَمُوا If the people knew the reward there was in calling the adhan and in being in the first saf, if they had no other way of doing that besides drawing lots, they would have drawn the lot. To say, right, let's put all our names in the hat. Let's see who is going to call out the adhan from amongst us. We all want to do it. Let's see who is going to be in the first saf. Subhanallah. Such a great reward. So if you are to help others to come there, you will be a person who gets a double reward. One for you and one for facilitating for someone else. Did you see now? Because in Islam, when you help someone to do a good deed, you get the reward of the good deed, right? The one who shows someone a good deed gets a reward equal to the doer of the deed. Similarly, if you have helped someone do good, you will definitely get that reward when the first saf is so rewarding. You will get a double reward by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the meaning. From today on, from today on, inshallah, every time someone wants to push into the center, we will make space. But do not be from amongst those who push others and create such a disaster in the sufuf. You must come early to get the full reward by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that. May Allah make it easy for us. The same applies if you are sitting in a lecture or you, you are courteous. I'd like to take it further to being courteous even on the roads. And that would fall under the narration, good character, good conduct. On the road, many of us are selfish. We want to go. We don't want anyone else to go. Let them go as well, once in a while. And don't be so, so kind that you turn off your engine and the people behind you now, their right of moving is now usurped. No. You let one or two vehicles go and then you carry on. Let someone else let another one or two vehicles go and then you carry on. Apply common sense and inshallah you will earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, and I'd like to perhaps end by two of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One says, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ للناس. I can never ever skip this hadith. The best from amongst you are those who are most beneficial to the rest of mankind. The hadith says, خَيْرُ nas, not even from amongst you. The best of people are those who benefit the rest of the people in the biggest way. Notice, this includes Muslims, non-Muslims, those you agree with, those who you do not agree with, your friends, your enemies. If you are the most beneficial to them, you are the best. So the best of mankind those who are the best to the rest of mankind. That's simple. Subhanallah. Again, ask yourself, am I really beneficial to everyone? If you are, good news to you. And this includes, like I said, the non-Muslims. Because 
Definitely when they see the character and conduct of a Muslim, the minimum is they will recognize the value of this beautiful heavenly religion. Let's not be from among those who cheat and deceive bad mouth. We say bad words, vulgar words. A swear word is never meant to be uttered by the mouth of he or she who reads the shahada. You say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, and the same tongue wants to swear a bad word, vulgar words, in, ho- in our homes, with our own spouses and children. How can that be? With those who work for us, those who are employed by us, we think because we are paying them a salary, we are entitled to abuse them. No. You will be the best if you actually help those whom you have employed to do the job that you have tasked them to do. That's when you become the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in the right direction. The final narration I'd like to make mention of, although there are several other narrations, but I see that perhaps we are running out of time. The reason why I am overshooting the time, remember, last year we cut it, so this year we will lengthen it, inshallah. So we are doing qada, you know, qada of last year, inshallah. So the hadith says, خَيْرُ الْأَصْحَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُكُمْ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَخَيْرُ الْجِيرَانِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُكُمْ لِجَارِهِ Two types of people. The best companion is he who is most beneficial to his companion. Two of you are traveling together. Which one of you benefits the other more is the better person. A group of you are traveling together. Who is the one who benefits the most? That is the one who is the best. You are studying together. You are working together. You go to the masjid together. You have a friend, a companion. Who is the most beneficial? To that particular friendship is the best from amongst them. Remember that. So ask yourself, from my group of friends, from my group of people, from those I interact with, who is the most beneficial? Who benefits everyone the most? Let it be me. And imagine if everyone is competing to be the best. What type of a life would you lead? So beautiful, so good, mashallah. And the best neighbor, subhanallah, the best neighbor is he who is most beneficial to his neighbor. From all the neighbors, you ask yourself, how am I treating my neighbors? You know, it is reported in one of the narrations that one of the neighbors of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, who was not even a Muslim, when he put his house for sale, the general going price was a certain amount. I forget the amount. He decided to put the house for sale for double the price. And the people asked him, how come you are charging double the price? He says, you know what? Half of it is for the house and the other half is actually for the neighborhood. The neighbor is this man, such a great man. So you need to pay double the price, subhanallah. All I'm showing you is the value of a good neighbor. Because those of you who have bad neighbors, I'm sure you know how detrimental it is. And you know how dangerous it is. And you know how bad it feels. So be the best of neighbors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed open your doors. My brothers and sisters, we've spoken about brilliant character, conduct. We've spoken about others and reaching out to others. Notice all these ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are connected to others. Starting with the one where it says the best from amongst you, those who learn the Quran, it didn't stop there. It says and teaches it to others. If you stop there, you don't qualify. You learn it and you preach it, you teach it to others in the most beautiful way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah bless your nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, your families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease in the dunya and the akhirah. I look forward inshallah to the next few days. Tomorrow, inshallah, in this in Kumasi and the following day in Tamale. Have I got that right? Tamale, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. I end by reminding you with one small reminder. What we heard today, I will be asked about it on the day of judgment. And so will you. You will be asked. You heard a message. Or you delivered a message. How did you react to that message? Did you just say, wow, it was a good talk. You know, we heard some brilliant things and that's it. And you continued to lead your life as you wished. Or did it change you? 
Did you promise I'm going to become a better person? Do we promise that inshallah we will improve ourselves? Inshallah. It was not loud enough. We can try again. Do we promise that inshallah we will change ourselves for the better? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. We heard that. And I hope that that is definitely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill that promise. Don't be from among those who say inshallah, but they don't mean yes. You know, when some people say inshallah, they mean no. You say, brother, will you come to my house? Say, inshallah. When you hear that, it means no, I won't. But if they say inshallah, that means yes, I will come. And they give you a time. Two o'clock tomorrow, I see you. That means that inshallah is legitimate. So we change not from tomorrow morning, from now. As we get up, be considerate of the others while you are driving out, while you're walking out. It will take some time to do things. Don't worry, take that time. The night is young. The weather is absolutely beautiful, mashallah. It's as though we have some free air conditioning. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. And we ask Allah to bless us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.